So today we're going to fit a 200 series rebar. These are the same rebar the whole way through from early your 08 to the last of the facelift model. Um, the only difference being in the reflector area, there's two different size reflectors when they had the facelift. This, that's the only part that changes, the rest of it's the same. So from when you unbox it, it'll come with no lights and stuff in it. As far as fitting your tail lights, they pop rivet in the hole. Now, to remove the tail light when they come in the packet, you use a small screwdriver in the slot, they'll come apart. Two pop rivets in there, they're already pre-drilled, the wires, the hole's already there. Rivet them in, get them fitted. The reverse light should fit neatly in the hole, so you need to have them sitting in the hole first, then put your bolt in. Nip them all up tight. Once that's all in, we like to pre-wire it all on the bench. So we wire the reverse lights, the tail lights, everything into one tail. So everything is linked and will come out with just some dual core for your reverse and five core for your tail lights, all linked together. If the car's going to have two carriers, whether it be twin wheel, wheel jerry, we like to put the number plate wire light linked into that loom while we're going. Once everything's wired like that, taped, zip tied, while it's all easily accessible, then we're ready to give it... A, fit it to the vehicle. You can also remove your bumper and put all your parking sensors in at this point so you can zip tie them neatly. Um, they don't need any modification, simply unclick them from the bumper, they'll snap back in these holes, a couple of zip ties into the bar and you're good to go and then you're ready to fit it. All right, so now we're stripping the car ready to fit the rear bar to. So first thing is taking your rear bumper off, leave your mud flaps still on the car, Remove your parking sensors and loom, and then they can be refitted as we discussed earlier to the bar. Remove your reflector from the bumper, put that aside, that'll be ready for the bumper cut later. All the bracketry, so there's a, normally a tin guard under here, needs to go, number plate bracket, factory recovery points need to come off, um, so basically the whole chassis is stripped. We like to strip the outer here because this is where we'll tap the tail lights into into your trailer plug loom so have, that's a nice spot to cut it at, so at this point you would fit if you're doing twin carry you'll do the camera kit as well camera kit plugs in in this top corner so seal off trim pulled back roof lining down and the plug is in the top corner it's like a double adapter we'd like to run that down inside of there i normally gain access from this plastic cap to run it out here because it's easier and then feed it through here and out that grommet. That grommet it comes on the loom so you'll know you're in the right spot. The length and everything is dictated by it. That's then our, our camera kit's loom is ready to go up the arm. The other thing you've got to do is remove the camera from the door. Camera bracket is normally screwed into there. You can take your two Torx bits out. You can actually destroy the two plastic clips that are in the door so you don't have to remove all the trim. You can pluck them out with pliers. The bumper has extra ones of them in it that you know you're longer going to use. They so can use those clips back in there, fit your cover plate, and that's all ready to go. Then you'll have your camera separate, ready to fit later on. So at this point, we're ready to put the bar on the car. So now we've got the bar sitting on the car. There's a few things just to run through. The parking sensors, if you come over here, Daz, you got to make sure that you route them through there's access holes so that nothing's running underneath. So there's holes to run everything through. And also run it over the top of the chassis, which you can access through these holes at the top. You don't want anything, or well, the least amount possible of wires to be under the car to get broken off. The other thing too is the parking sensor plug which is normally clipped up on the body. We like to unplug because it'll foul the aluminium top later, which is this one. 
It also gives you a bit more length to get everything plugged in and all zip tied up neatly. The lead that we've wired everything together to, as we were saying, now we can tap that in up here. It's nice and accessible. You can do it super easy before we put this panel back on. So that's, that's easy. We'll put our gas strap bowls on and got the gas straps on ready. Trailer plugs will mount to this little plate. It's got the holes ready for an Anderson plug and a seven pin flat. This one's obviously a double stacker of a combo. As far as bolting it on, back under here, Daz, you've got your two factory captive ones, which are the fine thread bolts we supply. The back one is a nut on a stick, so that's just a hole in the rail. These are the sticks. You can literally bend them to the shape that you want. So you, a good trick is to put a screwdriver through it, like once you've got it roughly in, you can hold that, line it all up neatly, then put your bolt in. How he is now, he's all loose, ready to do up. Now, the back holes, you have to drill. The main hole is on the inside of the chassis, which is like a 30 mil hole. You'll be able to put your socket in, which you'll access from in here. So if you look, I've got this bolt in and the nut is accessible in here. So you'll get your socket in there, rattle gun on the bottom and do him up. Once you've got all four of them done up, that's it, that's the bars done and tight. The mud flaps, um, we like to back all the screws off for the mud flaps so they're nice and loose. Then you can slip them over the bar they can be riveted on. We normally, we supply them with a stainless rivet. I'll show that bit a bit later, but the holes are there ready. So you'll have to make sure you get all your clips and stuff out and the holes, these will line up once you pull the mud flap over. We do that once the bumper's back on. So now we're going to do the bumper cut. We're going to end up with two bumperettes. We're going to cut the middle out. So basically, we already know the dimension it's going to be around here. We want to measure from this corner because it's a good reference point and this, this point down here. So you measure there, 375, here, 290. It doesn't have to be super accurate because we're going to need a 10 mil gap for the rubber. So we're going to cut it to that size so it'll fit on and then remark it. We're going to use the same reference point, come down. Three seven five, and then where our intersection will be, it's 290. Again, doesn't matter if we're a little bit either way, this is just to get it initially cut off. And we're going to line the two up. and then we go about 10 mil below here. This does run slightly downhill, then flat. So we do that tape first, then come roughly 10 mil down. Like that. 10, 12 mil, it will get cut again. That's your rough bumper cut. And then straight through this line. approximately 12 mil up from there, 20 mil in, we will radius the corner and that's where the hub will be. This does get an infill in here so don't stress too much, but yeah, cut up, we normally leave the corner, die grind it, cut across, die grind it.
So now we've taken that bit off the top. It's so we've got clearance on the hub here for when you get the dust cap on. And I've taken a bit out the back so the arm can pass through here. I've cleaned it all up so it doesn't look like we've done it. Now we're going to put it back on. Don't stress too much if it overlaps, that's fine. So now what we're going to do, you, you can measure it if you want or you can eye it. We want 10 to 12 mil. The rubber is 10 mil. We don't want the rubber squashed. We want it to be relaxed and it can have a tiny gap or just touch. So you'll get your tape, basically eye it up. Remembering it goes flat and then runs downhill. So you've got to sort of do your flat bit first and then come downhill. And this might take a couple of goes, but this is the bit that, if you get the rubber right, it looks fantastic. If it's all shitty, it really takes away from the end job. So just remember, it, it does flatten out around here, so you've got to do it in a couple of goes. You better to cut it multiple times and get it spot on. And then round here, same deal. Parallel with the top. And we're ready to take, cut it and put the pinch weld on. rubber on and it's all neatened up and clean this little infill goes in the back here it's purely so when it's on you can't see the ugliness behind it and it also stiffens this all back up so what we're going to do it'll sit in there you can go all the way to the bottom if you want I like to sit it up a bit and put a bit of rubber on there so it all matches so basically pick the height that you want it to be at whether you want to run pinch weld on or not Mark your hole, which is a factory screw hole, and then we're going to put the screw back in there and mark our two rivet holes. I have already done it, so we've got our holes in there. You can just stretch this around and drill them. So we'll start by drilling this one. rubber on it. So I've got one more river to go, but then that's how that will fit. So now we're going to fit the carrier. The trick with these is we've already greased our lower bearing, knocked the seal in, that's all fitted. Got our top bearing greased, castle nut, split pin, dust cap. When this goes up, oh, we've also put our ball in the bottom for the gas strut. We've got our gas strut on ready. We go on. The trick is not to let the stopper engage, like not be around there. That way, this without being compressed can click on. And then you can use the leverage of this, compress the gas strut and let the stopper engage. Now that'll sit there. We can put our top bearing in. Washer, castle nut.
you don't need to bend that over because the dust cap will keep it on there. It can't go, it can't come out once this is on. We've got a tool for putting it on, but a large socket is the go. It's just a knock on fit and he's done. We've also got the camera bracket mounted on. Now we drill and tap that into the arm if it's twin wheel. So there's two options with our camera kit. You either get the flat bracket for twin wheel or a 45 degree bracket, which will bolt on the bottom of your jerry box out here if you've got a jerry box. The idea of the slot in them is if you want, you can put a shifter on it and angle it down if you want to change the view. If you're going to bend it though, just make sure the camera is loose or out of it so you don't crack the camera. But basically plug it in, check your light to view, go from there. From here, our camera kit will plug straight in. Normally, like like to P-clip that up the back of the arm. I'll touch on that a bit later. The next step is to put your latch on. I've already got this side done up and set up. So you leave your checker plate off till the very end so that you've got access to zip tie your wires up. You can also get your hand in here to bolt the latch on. So as this one is, we want it to be nice and central. So you can obviously open line it up. These are slotted, so we've got plenty of adjustment. To go on and latch tight. If it doesn't have that nice over center springy feel like that, you simply shut it with something on top of the bolt, which will bend that a little bit around. The more you shut it over something, like as if you had the screwdriver in there, the more, the tighter it will get. The more you flatten that, if you flatten it out with a rubber mallet, for instance, it will get less, less tension. You want them to be like that. So it pops open and shut. The next thing is the wiring, as we talked about before. All standard trailer plugs are the same. So brown being tail, red being stop, green being right, uh, yellow being left. Now on a Toyota, not to be confused, black is not earth, black is reverse. White is earth. So the colours that our tail lights are will line up perfectly. And reverse feed is in this loom. So you don't need to go in the car for anything except for the camera kit. Line them all up like that. You can solder it, you can do whatever you want. Tape it up, zip tie that down under there. Once the, cover, the bumperette goes on, it'll be fully hidden and safe. The next thing is a wheel plate. This dimension from the mounting face to the upright needs to be 10 mil less than the backspace of the wheel. So something across the back of your wheel, measure into there, whatever that is, 185, we want this distance here to be 10 mil less, so 175. And then do that up, that must be super tight and it needs to touch the upright, that's why we have that crush, it's like a big spring washer. The other thing is your number plate bracket, which is a two piece. That goes behind the wheel, so obviously nuts off, that on there, wheel on, that will poke through the hole of your wheel, and then this bracket will bolt on once the wheel's on. So that's behind the wheel, not in front. Uh, the bracket that's on here, a lot of people get confused that it's meant to be backwards. When it's open, it will read the correct way. This bracket is for if you buy one of our light poles, that's the locking pin for it, or locking bolt, you'll undo that knock the light bulb in with a rubber mallet and nip that back on. But that is how that's meant to be. Right, so now we're all done, it's finished. You see our little infills, now they're fitted. So it just hides seeing through there. Um, our pin trail fitment's all nice. We've clipped these back on, put our bumper, uh, bumperette screws back in. Your mud flat fitment should be all tight like that and neat. Um, our camera bracket, as I was saying, you can aim that down if you want or leave it like that. Your best just to look at the view, see if you want to change it. Our number plate wiring's been ran up there. Our number plate bracket now, as I said, is behind the rim. Bolted on two terminals so you can remove it if you get a flat tyre, obviously. We've P clipped our Reverse camera wiring all up neatly. It's very important that it gets a zip tie on there so that when it's opening and shutting, you don't pinch it in the stopper. Obviously, you now got to check all your lights work. Um, our 
checker plate on the top, it's literally just sicker flexed on. So any type of sicker flex adhesive, just a small bead, push it on, leave it for the night or as long as you can, and that's it. Bar that, that's all done. Check your lights work and you're finished.